for me, I am much more open to that part of the conversation, mm. to understanding, like, I don't expect a lot of my opinions will change because I believe, you know, it's your experiences in life which have led you to the position that you hold. And generally you need more varied experiences to color that and change it. And so I don't think, you know, debating or Twitter or arguments are going to change anyone's mind. No. But I do think in the big whole whatever, you know, that we call this world, there is um, a need for a variety of different ways of thinking, different ways of looking at the world, because that's the tapestry that makes it actually worthwhile in the end. And, you know, for me, it's boring. It's boring sitting here listening to it. Most of my followers are just conservatives now. Mm. We all think the same, you know, have a big hoorah festival and everyone else, leftists, we don't like them, blah, blah, blah. But does that lead us forward? Does it improve us as people? Does it grow us as people? Well, I think not. Yeah, probably not. I mean, if you're sort of having the same conversation with the same people, mm. your opinion becomes very... Well, not opinion, maybe your perspective, you know, becomes yeah. very, very narrow. So that's a, that's a good point. Do you find Twitter is the best space for that, though? Like, I've been on Twitter like three times, you know, no, in the span before I started this this mm -hmm. podcast. And the first two times was absolutely horrendous, you know. I mean, just, just the amount of people that, that wait, like trolls, you know, you post up something that people just wanted to argue for the sake of arguing. Mm -hmm. You want to just express it or even ask a question, right? You're allowed, like, you have someone post up something and you're genuinely curious. So you ask a question, then people just become absolutely like, how dare you ask these questions, you know? I don't know. I don't know that Twitter is the best place for it. But Twitter is definitely the place where it's the fire where your beliefs and values are tested and your opinions are tested. Mm. And that's what I say to people. I'm like, get on Twitter because that's where you figure out if you truly believe what you believe. I have probably been cancelled the most out of all Pacific people. I would agree. Twitter. Yeah, I would say that too. <laughs> and I, and I couldn't care less. You know, like people, are like how do you go through it? And I said, easy. There's a mute button. I just literally mute that conversation, mm -hmm. and I move on with my life. Two weeks later, I find out they're still quoting it, but and friends. talking about it. You know, <laughs> and I'm just like, cool. For me, it's you know, it, I never take it personally um, in that regard because it's just like throw it out there, mm. you know, and see if you. There is some stuff where I put it out there and I'm like, interesting. Like the I put out this tweet maybe at the beginning of the year about gaming. And I said, anyone who's older than, I think, 16 or 14 or 15 that plays more than four hours of video games a week, I don't, you know, seriously question, you know. A week or a day? A week. Was it a day or a week? Must have been a day. Okay, four hours. Girl, I was like, well, four hours a week is... That's average numbers, man. Four hours a day, maybe. Yeah, for sure. I don't know. Like for me, I was, I can't do that for, you know, two hours mm. in a week, let alone, you know, four hours mm. a day. And I got this whole bombardment of mm. mental health and stress release and personal choice and blah, blah, blah. And what I realized is I'm like, shit, man, people play video games a whole lot more than I thought. <laughs> a lot, <man. laughs> I was like, this is crazy, you know, yeah, because yeah. my to my mind, it's always been something that, you know, once you leave high school, mm. I believe you don't play video games anymore. Mm. You gotta play in the real world. That's that's my that's whole fair. that's my whole belief. Like yeah. my sister right now, I'm training her. She turned eighteen beginning of the year. And she had something on her phone, some kind of video game, something on her phone. And I said, Delete it. And she's like, Oh, you know, and I said, Delete all the games from your phone. And she's like, Why? I said if you need escapism, go read a book or do something, you know, and it's just a different way of looking at the world and people might be, you know, it might be too, what do you call it, rigid, but I just believe as an adult, your job is to play in the world, you know, mm -hmm. go out there, take your losses, experiment, um, you know, but play. There can't, the, they can't the be a balance world. though, you don't think? You think there, oh, there can be a balance? There, there can always be a balance. I mean, like, that's why I said, you know, more than... Even if it was four hours a week, I think that's a lot. You know, four hours a week, you know. It's the same as morons who go and, you know, go to strip clubs. That's their form of release or whatever. I'm not bringing it down to a strict amount of hours. I'm just mm -hmm. like, you know, there's You're a... You're talking about the activity in itself. It's, it's just a mindset around, you know, 
we have this amazing potential that we call life and this world. And I think um, I think we do a huge disservice when we decide to not participate in it because life is happening to you whether you want it to or not. You know, it's it's going to happen. Hmm. And most of the time, we are living according to someone else's plan for our life. Hmm. 